All right, guys, thank you so much for getting on tonight and taking time out of your night. I am super excited to have the Flynn sisters on with us tonight. They are not only um, great friends of mine, but they are awesome coaches. They are co-founders of Fly Nation, which is a thriving and booming team. Um, and they're going to talk tonight a little bit about recruiting, some of the things that they do, give some tips and some good nuggets, and then we're going to open it up for questions. Um, but these two ladies, seriously, I love them with all my heart. I've learned so much from them. I started my journey and learned a ton from them. So I hope that, um, you know, I know that you guys will as well. So I just want to thank them before they get started and welcome them tonight. Thank y'all. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you for taking the time. We're excited. Of course. Well, we're happy to be here. Um, we're basically, um, I'll just jump right in. I'm Erica, for anybody that doesn't know me. Um, and I'm going to start it off, um, like Carly said, we're going to talk about recruiting, but we're really going to start it with how to recruit challengers and then kind of talking about going into coaching as well. So as you guys sit there, I'm gonna ask you a question. If I went to your social media, that would be your main Facebook page, your Instagram, or your likes page, would I know that you're into health and fitness? And I don't mean, you know, up in the Instagram description with the cute little symbol letters, it says like fit coach, or where it says like employed Emerald coach at Beachbody. I mean, would I know within your social media posts that you are into health and fitness? And hopefully the answer is yes. Now, if I knew that and I was a random person just rolling through Facebook and trolling like we know everybody on the universe does, would I know that you could help me with health and fitness? That's a big one. So many, I, I, I can guarantee every one of you on here, and if it hasn't happened yet, it will happen. You've had somebody like and comment your post all the time and then a month later, you see them working with another coach and you think, why did I not message that person? I've done it. Katie has done it. Carly has done it. I see Nicole, all you girls. I know that it's happened to every single one of you. So if you're a newer coach or if you are a veteran coach, this is super important what I'm going to talk about. And it's the big, I'm a beach body coach day. If you have not made a post, saying that you are a beach body coach and that you can help people with their health and fitness journey i better see it tomorrow because that is vital 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 and the sooner you talk about it and you tell people that you can help them the better you know every single day we, I mean, it's, it's one of the three vital behaviors, being a product of the product. And that does not mean that you have to sit there and have some big number weight loss story. It means being a product of the product is that you're showing up daily to work out or to follow your schedule and to drink Shakeology, or some of you might be using the performance line. It's that you're showing up and using it and you're sharing that. So if you have not made a post with a call to action, talking about what Beachbody has done for you. Has it helped you mentally? Has it helped you physically? Has it helped your family? Have you gone off of medication because of it? Is your, did you pay off a credit card because of it? You have to share that. And you need to share with it that you can help people with their health and fitness journey. Um, and that's, that's just a big one that I wanted to start with today because I honestly, this is a perfect example. I am down at my parents' condo in Florida for a couple of months, months, which thank you beach body for the opportunity to be able to do that. And we have this beautiful studio that I've been able to go over and, and do size at, which is so fun. It's been great for videos. And this girl walked in today and she was a yoga instructor. And she's like, what do you do? And I said, Oh, I'm a beach body coach. She goes, Oh my gosh, I love working out at the beach. Do you do classes down there? I was like, no, but that's a really good idea. <laughs> no, I don't. You have to remember how naive and, and confused people are about what this is. So make sure you put it out there, what it is, a call to action, join my group, message me on how to do this, and um, do it sooner than later. I'll pass it over to Katie for the next one. All right, so uh, my first thing I'm going to talk about is 
all about um, timing, Facebook logistics, and how to really prepare before you're going to be making a post like that. So I'm talking any big call to action post, whether it be a um, join my challenge group post or announcing your coach or um, a coaching opportunity, um, posting about a glance into coaching, whatever it is, an important post you're gonna make. There's some preparation that you can do beforehand to make sure that um, you're doing it not only at the right time, but that you've prepped to uh, get, I call them the Facebook minions. I swear there's somewhere where they, all these minions work on Facebook and they make it harder for us. So we have to be smarter than them. We have to figure out ways to be smarter than them. Um, so ways you can do that because again, with uh, making a post like this, you know, people are going to like it or comment it, whatever. But um, I, I mean, I've been a coach for two years and I can tell you it's happened very minimal times um, where somebody's banging my door down to buy a challenge pack. So obviously we can't rely solely on these, these posts that are going on social media, but it's a huge step of being a coach. We always have to be putting stuff on. Um, on Facebook three to five times daily. And these important posts, um, like coaching or challenge group posts, are important for our business, but we can't rely on them. But we wanna make them uh, the best possible and we wanna hope to get at least a great reach on them as much as we can. So a few things you can do beforehand. Um, if I know that, um, say, on a Wednesday night that I'm going to be announcing my Glance Into Coaching group, that morning, I'm going to start. I'm going to be on point with my social media that day. I am going to really commit to three to five posts that day because sometimes it doesn't always happen. You know, we say three to five a day, but sometimes it doesn't always happen. But if I'm going to make an important post that night, I'm going to be on point with my posts, making sure that I'm getting um, into people's news feed and getting traction on my page already because then when the time comes, your post is going to be seen more. So it's just one big logistic with Facebook. If you're interacting with more people, then more people are going to see your post. If you're private messaging, I don't know if you know this or not, and I was kind of mind blown when I heard this. If you private mes message somebody on your friends list, if you've never even talked to them before, whatever it may be in your friends, and you private message them, then your posts for that day are going to be in their, their timeline. Um, so I don't know if you've ever gone through your friends list and been like, oh my gosh, I didn't even realize I was friends with that person. It's because you never interact. If you're not commenting on their stuff, you're not commenting on theirs, it's like you're not even friends to Facebook. They only let you see who you're interacting with. So on a day that I'm gonna make something important, I'm doing a lot of interactions, commenting, liking, private messaging, um, getting myself prepped for this. Um, and then uh, we go on to actually posting the post. You wanna be aware of the timing of your post and making sure that you know what your audience is. And if you're a newer coach, it's gonna take some time to understand that. You're gonna have a lot of trial and error. You're gonna get crickets on your post. Like, you're going to get one like on your post and you have to just be okay with that. Like, it's not like you get one like on your post and like, you should go run and quit being a coach because it's all it's happened to all of us. I still get crickets sometimes. I posted something today and I deleted it 15 minutes later because I was like, not enough likes. Not enough likes, I'm deleting it. So, I mean, it still happens to me and I freak out, but. It's, it's normal and it happens to all of us. So you can't let that break you. If you get crickets, it's fine. Um, but you'll start to be more aware of what your following is like. Are you on the East Coast? Are you on the West Coast? You need to know what time your followers are most on Facebook. For me personally, um, early morning posts, I don't do great with those. I do better in the evening when people are after they're eating dinner, they're sitting down, they're scrolling through Facebook. I always do better with my posts at night. But I know people that great great reach in the morning. So you just kind of have to figure that out. Um, so this is a great example. So I forget where I found this, but um, I have a picture of it. I can share it with Carly so she can put it in your team page if you don't have it already. But it said, so say you have 200 Facebook friends and you post something at midnight. Of that 200, maybe 15 people out of that are on Facebook at that time. Out of that 15, how many have you really interacted with lately? Maybe like three. So out of that three, how many people are actually scrolling to see your post? Maybe one. So then, bam, only one person saw that post that you worked so hard for. So that's why it's important to know your following and um, know what's a great time to post because 
if you get too late or too early, like for me, that's what mine is. I just feel like it's kind of a waste um, for those important uh, posts because Facebook is just one big logistic. And again, we just have to be smarter than them and figure out what works for us. Um, just a tip to um, ex start expanding that friends list. Uh, if you just take some time, maybe during a your next power hour, really go through your friends list and number one, clean it up. Go through and like for me personally, I don't feel the need to be friends with like 8 million men, like guys I went to high school with. Like just like haven't talked to you in six years and like you're definitely never going to do something beach body. So like for me, Facebook is a business now. I don't really need to be friends with that person anymore. So every once in a while I'll do a kind of a clean sweep of my friends list. Um, and then also we should be adding three to five people daily because we want to continue to expand that. And that's something so simple you can do every single day. So for example, if you have, I tell this to my coaches all the time, I'm like, tell me how many friends that you have on your Facebook right now. And they're like, I have 200 friends, which 200 in the Beachbody world is small. We need to have more than that. We have more people we need to reach. So if I say, okay, if you add three people daily from now till Christmas, you should have at least about 400 and I think it was like 430 new friends by the time the, the end of the year comes. So definitely uh, be expanding that market continually and adding people because um, just like I said, the logistics of Facebook, the more you interact with, the more friends you have, then the better traction you're going to start getting as a coach. I'm wrapping up because the next part that I'm talking about is promoting your fit page. And it says, let's talk about the minions of Facebook controlling. Our <laughs> we share a brain. No, literally we do. It's very scary. <laughs> <laughs> If you have not promoted on your fit page yet, I highly recommend doing that. And it kind of goes hand in hand with what she's saying about the timing of things. And there's so many different ways to look at that with your business. For instance, I had never boosted or promoted my entire fit page in its entirety. Like the whole thing where it comes up as a banner ad in people's newsfeed and it's like a certain amount of characters. You can write this quick little blurb that says, you know, follow this health and fit coach for recipes and daily information. I did that the week that we were going to Cancun because I wanted to drive people to my page so that they could see I was there on a free trip with my best friends in the entire world in Cancun for free. So there are ways that you can, like I just said, you can promote the entire page itself. You just make, um, like in PicMonkey, the actual Facebook um, like cover photo sizing is, is what the picture will be. It's the same rules and regulations as boosting a post though, where it's like you can't have more than 50% of the picture with um, covered with words, yeah, yada, yada. But you can also boost just an individual um, post itself. So I'll give you an example. Um, Fly Nation is running a free um, ab and booty and clean eating challenge this week. And it was a freaking hit because it's not just a clean eating group. We're able to keep people engaged and going all week with these daily posts of these little mini fitness challenges. So of course, you know, in my live feed and on Instagram, I had this picture, it was like 50% words and 50% booty. <laughs> it was like me, you know, a side pick. So I knew on my likes page that that would not get promoted at all. And Katie and I, two years into this, our war market, like hashtag she gone out the building. We have to tap into our cold market at this point, which is the scariest and one of the hardest things in this business. But to put a positive spin on it, it's also one of the most fun things to do in this business because you're making connections with people who are not on your radar at all. So I was fortunate enough to get, you know, the Facebook minions of, of the world to approve my ad. I paid $20 for five days and with that, I had 27 comments of emails of customers. And then, of course, you have to sift through there and the people who can't read, who are coaches or are working with coaches already. But I have 13 brand new people who, through targeting in that post, are into health and fitness, their military wives, you know, all these different things that I promoted and targeted. 13 people. If I could sell one challenge pack after that, I will make that money back. And I always think of it this way. They could be a coach and they could be the next Melanie Mitro. So really look at your budget, put some skin in the game and promote 
your fit page and promote your posts that have to do with joining a challenge group, a fitness free challenge for sure. The free groups, cause you'll get a million, million comments on them. Um, and just timing, like Katie said too, just being aware, you know, if you think that you're going to be running a 21 day fix group or a size challenge group for next month, start putting um, a paid promoted post up there so that you're starting to gather those people outside of your cold market altogether. Um, I think that's all I have for that, Katie. Just to uh, piggyback that a little bit too, um, like our dad is a businessman. He owns, he owns um, a car dealership. And I just remember like when I was really starting to get going in my business and he, he said something that stuck with me and I tell my coaches this too. Um, if you want to make money, you have to spend some money and it doesn't have to be outrageous. You guys, we're talking like $5 here, $5 here on these promotions. You don't have to be spending like $50 or something crazy. It's just a little here and there. And like Erica said, you're, you're going to make that money back anyways. Just have to look, you know, down, um, into the future and just realize that it's going to help you. It's going to help you expand. Um, and you know, like she said, just throw some skin in the game because it's just going to continue to help you grow that network of people. Can I ask one quick question? Yeah. Because I know that we get this a lot. Um, what works best for you guys when you're targeting? Um, do you just do, do you get down to specifics, like their likes and stuff? Or do you guys find what works for you best is just like the age, um, stuff like that? I do. I know, like, I think Eric and I the last time did different. So I do think that like both can work. Um, this most recent time I did, which I had like an amazing, um, turnout for, I had like 40 some comments on my, my ad challenge. And that's pretty, I mean, a pretty big number for my fitness page. I usually get like crickets over there. So, um, yeah, I just did like, I always do like 21 to 55 or something. I don't like do like 18 to whatever the highest number it would be on there, but I just do like 21 to 55. Um, I do do men and women. I don't limit it to limit it to just women. Um, and I make sure I type in because it'll automatically come up U.S., but then you can also add in Canada because obviously we're in Canada too. So add in Canada. And then um, I just did um, people who like my page and their friends, um, and that worked for me. Um, when you do that, you do run the risk of having to sift through people because if a coach likes your page, then your ad is going into their friend's feed and maybe they're already working with that coach. So of those 40 people, I probably got it down to like, I think I added like 20 or something. So about 50% of the people, which is still a great number of new people to be working with. Um, but you have to, you know, sift through them a little bit. Even some coaches commented on it. And I'm like, girl, you're a coach. Why do you want to be my app challenge? <laughs> I don't get it. Not at all interest. <laughs> yeah. oh, so funny. Um, and just to, to quickly answer it for me, I did specific targeting, um, which would have been like for me, um, for those of you who don't know, my fiance is in Afghanistan. So I did like military wives, milso, military, um, stay at home moms. Um, I think I did like up to seven things. So there's there, and I've done what Katie did. There's it's trial and error for sure. Cool. Yeah. Yay. All right. So now we're going to kind of transition into, I mean, that was just basically building up how to present um, all the opportunities you have on social media and how to grow that network, get that customer base to do, you know, your awesome um, challenge groups. So uh, we're not really going to go into how to run a challenge group or anything like that. I know you guys know how to do that, but um, I just wanted to give a quick tip. This is pretty random, but I thought it was beneficial to add in um, that when I had some one-on-ones with my coaches, they weren't, I didn't know that like, they weren't thinking to do this. And I thought it was um, helpful for my business each month. So um, every month I, uh, or when Eric and I have a group, we will announce the promos that are going on with Beachbody in our group with some sort of like picture or something, because I would never in a million years put those on like my live feed because that to me is like salesy and it's like, look here, buy this. But if somebody's in my challenge group, they're already doing something beach body or they're like on the cusp of probably just about to commit to it. Um, so I feel like to my challengers, I feel like I can present these, these deals to them because I don't feel like I'm being like, buy this, buy this, buy this. I feel like I'm doing them a favor of telling them what's on sale because not all of your challengers are going to go on the Beachbody website and check out the sales every month. It's just not realistic. They don't know. So I just want to make sure that they know every month. 
So uh, we do things to get like them engaged and to be like um, inquisitive about it first. We'll say something like, like for this month um, is a good example. Hey guys, uh, would anybody be interested in getting a three day refresh for $10? We put that in our challenge group and it's like, boom, everybody. Yes, me, why wouldn't you want it for $10? And then we reach out privately to each of our challengers and just say, um, you know, for example, if somebody maybe had bought their, their Shakeology last month on the 15th and it's coming up, um, it's gonna be the 15th soon, I would say something like, okay, this is perfect timing go on coach relation or customer uh, relations, cancel your Shakeology, and um, you get the three day refresh challenge pack. You're gonna get your Shakeology again, and you're gonna get the refresh for 10 bucks. So it's a win-win. You're already gonna get the Shakeology again anyways, but now you're getting this awesome program, whether it's like size or refresh, or whatever it is, for 10 bucks. And I feel like that's a really great deal and something that um, our challengers always respond to really well. I mean, obviously not everybody, but it's a great way to um, boost your success club as well. Um, yeah, I don't do that like on my live feed or anything, but just on um, in the groups because they're already committed to me coaching them anyway. So it's just a, a great um, deal for them. And I don't feel like I'm ever being icky or anything because I feel like as a coach, like I always like, like laugh. I'm like, I don't feel like I'm being annoying or icky or anything. Like I feel like I'm doing them a favor. Like I feel like they are in my group. I'm providing a great challenge group and I'm doing them a favor by telling them these sales because they don't know about it. Like I said, so that's just something Eric and I do in our groups to keep um, people interested because um, I know Carly would um, agree with me. I know like, Sometimes they say like repeat customers can't get success club points again, but I always get repeat points for people. So I don't know what the deal is with that. So that's why I always um, recommend that people um, continue to do the challenge packs. Okay, so we have some background there. All right, we have a little bit of time left. So I'm going to be quick on this next part, but I think it is so incredibly important. So you open up a challenge group, you have brand new people in there, and within two days, you're looking at somebody's post and you're like, wow, you're gonna be a coach. For sure, I want you to be a coach, you're my next rock star, and what do you do with them? Obviously, you know, there are people who have signed up to coach that were never challengers before, but for me, nine times out of 10, my people are challenger into a coach. That's just my business and the way that it has worked so well for me. So I wanted to give you guys some tips on what you can do with challengers who you feel would be an amazing coach and grooming them to be that coach. So you get them in there, you want to keep their momentum going first and foremost. You want to be checking in with them, tagging them. How are you doing? You also want to be checking in with them privately and keeping them moving along. I, I have had so many people before um, message me progress pictures, and I never knew that they were sticking with their program. Some people are just silent, and they need that encouragement to get out there. Um, you need to build the value in that person build the value of them being a part of your group. And by that, I mean just reminding them what an inspiration they are to people. Encourage them to post their progress pictures in the challenge group because what do people do when people post a progress picture? They blow it up because it's amazing. And encourage them to do it on their live feed because people will blow it up. And this is just a challenger. This isn't even a coach. Then you need to be mindful, and I'm really big on this, you need to be mindful of what program they're doing and at what point they are at in that program. So if I have somebody that starts a 21 day fix, which literally 9.5 times out of 10, all of my challengers start with a 21 day fix. If it gets down to that last week and they are crushing it, I always know what date my customer's HD Shakeology is gonna go through. And guess what? That person gets a message about seven days before that and we start talking about the coaching opportunity. Because you have an opportunity, you've already built the value, you have showed them that they're an inspiration, you have helped them, they have posted on their live feed hopefully, they are excited about what they're doing and they love what they're doing. So you start talking about the coaching opportunity before that next Shakeology shipment goes through because what happens? They can get another challenge pack before they sign up or 
they can use that challenge pack that they purchased before and you can, you know, we can get the $40 credited back, but you can talk about it then because they have the opportunity to get into your coach basics within that second month. They might be on a 60 day program. In turn, I have had people that have messaged me about challenge groups and I genuinely feel in the bottom depth of my soul that they would be an amazing coach and I offer the coaching opportunity right there and then. And we learned this last year, I think it was Amy Silverman maybe that kind of brought this to our attention, but she talked about how if somebody wants to start the 21 day fix and you think that they would be an amazing coach, you offer them the opportunity, you present it to them that they're gonna be a challenger, and in tandem, they're gonna go through your coach basics, which is typically three weeks long, and by the time they go through their first round, and they complete their coach basics, they have results to share right away in the beginning of their coaching journey. So don't, don't be intimidated. These people picked you already. They chose you to be their coach. So don't be scared to have, those are the people that it should be the easiest conversation to have with. Your challengers are going to be your best coaches. Um, Katie and Carly, I saw you guys messaging. Are we gonna jump on another link or? I think we're okay for now. Maybe if we have to. Okay. I think we're good. Um, okay, so that is all about, um, you know, recruiting your coaches or your challengers into coaches, which um, I would say um, I have a good mix of people that are starting um, from my challenge groups because challengers end up being great coaches. They also have a good mix of people that start um, before they're in my challenge groups as well. Um, and it's, it's cool that they're just getting started off right into Beachbody uh, with the coaching opportunity. And I definitely don't discourage that. I definitely don't tell anybody like, yeah, I'm doing a program first. If they want to jump right in and do it, um, I definitely just encourage them to do that. So I'm going to talk about uh, recruiting from Instagram because it's something I've been trying to focus on um, a lot recently because I swear you guys, Instagram is where it's at. Number one, if you don't have an Instagram account, like get off the call and go create an Instagram account right now because you have to have it. It is such a huge tool for us, such a huge tool. You're going to reach so many people. And guess what? I have full belief in uh, Beachbody going worldwide. I like, I think about it every day. I just think about how cool that's going to be when we go worldwide. I mean, I've never heard somebody from Beachbody ever say that, but I still think we're going to go worldwide someday. So <laughs> Think of all the people on Instagram um, that are just worldwide that you can reach as well. And it's so much easier to reach them than Facebook. So um, Instagram is something you're definitely going to start diving into if you haven't already. So I'm just going to run quickly through some uh, general tips as far as Instagram goes, things that I do, things I've learned, um, and things that have started to work for me. So uh, number one, if you um, haven't already, download the app. It's called Followers. Um, it's just followers. And that is a way to track your Instagram. It's a way to track who's following you, who you're following, um, how many people um, have in, engaged with you on your Instagram, people that uh, like your stuff the most. There's different things you can do on there. Um, but I will say the one thing, don't ever, ever open the tab that says who unfollowed you because all it's going to do is make you upset and you don't need any negativity. So that's a, a tab I try to avoid most, most of the time because – um, I don't want to know who of my friends unfollowed me. <laughs> so, like, I just don't care. So, but it's really great to see the number balance and, um, it's a great way to see your new followers. So, you know, it'll show you who your most recent followers and stuff like that are. See if you want to go follow them back, vice versa. So, uh, followers is a great app. Uh, second thing is make your profile pretty. So if you go to any top coach, you're going to go to their Instagram. I guarantee you their bio looks really good and they have everything uh, nicely put out. They have some couple things about them, their name, a couple emojis, whatever it may be. And it looks nice. Um, so that's something that's really important to you. Do you want to be appealing immediately when people are coming to your page? Um, another app to download is tags for likes. Um, actually the number, I'm pretty sure it's like tags for likes. And it is um, a way to easily copy and paste uh, popular hashtags, which is really beneficial when you're just like not sure what to hashtag. 
You can type in a topic that you're posting about and it gives you examples of things you can post. I delete some of them out, put some more in of my own, but it's a nice way to get just a base um, of hashtags. And you should be maxing out hashtags. You shouldn't be putting one or two on each picture. You should be putting 30 hashtags on every picture. Um, and I do it in the comments. That way, if I want to, I can go back and, and delete them, whatever it needs to be. Um, but and it looks better, I think, not to have it just in your original comment. Um, let's see. So to way to find people, start finding people that you relate to, you can search a hashtag. Um, you can search something that interests you, starting to figure out what those three to five interests are that you have with Beachbody, or not with Beachbody, with your life in general. Um, things that um, maybe pertain to you in that time of your life. Like for me right now, I'm engaged. I post a lot about things pertaining to like weddings and uh, sweating for the wedding hashtags and things like that. Um, so I can find some other people that are maybe engaged as well, um, and I can relate to them on that level. Post a lot about my dog. I post a lot about recipes. Just, you know, you'll find those things that are important to you that you post about, um, and you can search other people through um, hashtags. Um, once somebody starts engaging with you, liking your pictures, commenting your pictures, make sure you do it back as well. You don't want to just be... Um, a mystery person that doesn't interact back with anybody else. They want to know that you're seeing their stuff um, as well. So commenting on their pictures, liking their pictures. And um, being mindful to keep it 80-20, same as Facebook. 80% life, 20% business. So uh, personally for me, my Instagram is like a lot of fitness just because I always have done that from the beginning and it's worked for me. So I do post all my workouts and my Shakeology and my um, – my business opportunities and things like that. But I also keep it, you know, things about Josh and I, um, we'll post like date night, things like that on there. I do post just about life in general, you know, as well. Um, this is a great tip that I learned from another coach. Uh, she said that every Sunday or Monday, um, she picks um, a day to focus on it, adds it into her power hour, and she goes and writes down the name of 10 people on Instagram that for that week, those next seven days, She's going to just track those 10 people. And uh, she just picks them out based on you know their pictures or if they've already maybe engaged a little bit on Instagram. And you just pick these 10 people. That way you're not overwhelmed by this huge world of Instagram and you're losing track of people. And you comment and like somebody's picture, but then like, poof, they're gone. They're not in your feed anymore. You never see them again. So if you write these people down, you can go back to their pages, comment, like, comment again, multiple pictures. And once you feel like you've built up that relationship enough towards the end of the week, that's when you send them a message. Send them a hey girl message, um, whatever it may be. Uh, personally for me, I know we call them hey girl messages, but I like to put their name in it because it sounds more personal. So if I'm going to message Carly, it's going to be like, hey Carly, I really love all your Instagram posts. They're so inspirational to me. Um, how are you doing today? Blah, blah, whatever it may be, you know, your message. Um, I stick to like the compliment, comment, and question rule, always ending in a question because then they have to answer you back. It's not like you're just saying, I love your posts. And then they're just like, mm, whatever, creeper, bye. <laughs> you know, you want to like engage with them and ask them a question. That way they're going to answer you back. Um, yeah, so that's how I've been working my Instagram. And I'm pleasantly surprised recently about how um, I've had new people to talk with on there just by using these simple systems of tracking um, because it is so big and overwhelming, but it's, um, it's a huge tool for our business and definitely something I'm trying to dive more into. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. I have, and we'll be quick here. We have four minutes left. Would you want to be a part of your own team? If somebody was looking at your social media, would they want to be a part of your team? And Katie and I laugh all the time. When we get some of our time hops, we're like, oh my God, we were so negative. Holy crap. Now that's not to say that you can't like share like real, well, you know, problems or things in your life, but are you portraying that you love what you're doing, that you love your journey, that you're embracing your journey, that you're still on your journey, that you love coaching? Are you portraying that it has given you something in your life, a weight loss story, financial freedom, the ability to travel? If you were looking at Carly Wood social media, would you not want to join her team? Because I would. 
I would want to join Katie. I'd want to join Nicole. I don't, I don't know if we're all friends and I'm sure I would want to join you guys, but I all the time go to my own social media and I scroll to see what somebody else would be looking at. And is it engaging? Is it positive? Does it look fun? Does my life look fun? And would I want to join that? Um, I don't really have much more to say than that to just really, really, really be mindful of what you're posting. It's not that when we sign on the dotted line to be a coach that, you know, we can't be human and, you know, we can't have mistakes, but you do lose the, the ability and the right, excuse my language, to bitch on Facebook. I'm sorry. <laughs> you do. It is such a bad, bad, bad thing for your business. Be positive. I promise it will get you so far, so far in your business, in your life in general, just being positive. And obviously personal development, which I know Carly is huge on that within this team, that your life will be so much better if you, if you throw that out the window. Um, I think we're going to get kicked off. We talk a lot. No, and no politics. <laughs> like, no politics. The election is no, coming. No, no, no. Don't post about it. Cause, and nothing ever comes good of that. Don't post about the, um, not the election or politics. I'm like, I already saw a couple on my feed, and I'm like, girl, no. Don't post about that. Uh, but just quickly, guys, before we get kicked off, fake it till you make it. You don't have to be a five-star, 10-star, 15-star diamond to be acting like you're successful in this business. Fake it till you make it. One of my favorite examples is my coach, coach Chelsea Best. She up and moved from Mercer County, PA to Orlando, Florida, and she literally put on Facebook, like her life was incredible. Her and Michael were living in a shoebox, and you would never know it. She put on this front that she had this most incredible, amazing life, and I mean, she definitely does, but you know, she definitely pulled some strings as far as faking it until she made it, and I tell her all the time, that worked for you completely because people love her and follow her and join her because of the things she posts. So she make it so because of all of that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Which is awesome. All right, Thank guys. Thank you so much. I took so many notes. Y'all, that was amazing. I know that everyone on here um, appreciates y'all's time and I love you guys and think the world of you. And if um, anyone has any specific questions, you guys can go ahead and ask and be misfit and then, um, I can get it to one of you guys. Is that cool? Yeah. yeah. We're okay. sorry we don't have any time for questions. No, that's okay. Thank you. I just appreciate y'all's time tonight. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.